Bernstein again. Ben Hoffman. Believe in Badger Football Podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined as always by Wisconsin legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? <laughs> I mean, we're fantastic. I think we've all our our wounds have healed, and we are looking to a, a bright future. And I think that's why immediately we brought our our good friend Travis Beckham back because. He was vocal immediately about okay. what happened. And um, and I think, dude, th- listen, good for you. And I think it's uh, it's interesting. I think a lot of people are coming around, but I think it was raw at the beginning. Yeah. And that was like a couple days ago. Um, Travis, what, what, I guess, wait, Matt. We'll, well, first we'll, of all, thanks, welcome Travis, back. for coming back. Yeah, thanks welcome back. Coming, as always. We love I, I want to dive right face. in. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys having me. Um, yeah, uh, obviously the 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 first uh, go around was, was awesome, uh, and it's a privilege to be back and be able to uh, be blessed by your guys' presence. Um, but like you guys said, I, I think the 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 wounds um, have healed a little bit. You know what I mean? I think there's gonna uh, we still have the band aid on, and I think that because I I this year I decided to do a post game radio show. Um, I'm 1310 WIBA 97.3 in Milwaukee um, with Tim Scott. And um, after watching the guys and uh, obviously, Bernie, you know that, that playing at Wisconsin isn't something that you do and it just goes away. It, it, it's stuck with us forever. And so from the year after I left until – I die. These guys are going to be my boys. This is going to be a part of my nature. This is who I am. And I'm, I'm again, I, and I think I said it in the first podcast, I'm, I'm a huge fan um, of coach Chris. And um, I, I have the utmost respect for that man as a human, um, as a man and as a coach. And we have a team that was, uh, I, I think going in, um, Basically, I would probably say at least the last 10 years is I feel like going into the season, everyone was kind of skeptical of who we would be. And I think there was no profound, uh, I guess, guess of who we who we actually were. OK, and people were just like, OK, well, we're going we're going in the season, not necessarily prepared what our identity is going to be, but let's roll with the punches. And this year was a little bit different um, because. Uh, you, you, we come out hot and then uh, you lose to a team um, that you should beat uh, in the beginning of the season. And it's almost like, okay, well, you're having stupid penalties. And obviously, you know, you don't win big football games when you lose penalties. And um, it's like, okay, well, we're, we're four games, five games into the season. This stuff is going to go away. And it didn't. Um, and it was some of the mistakes that, some of the mistakes that were happening were things that should have been washed away the first couple of games. Obviously you come in and uh, you fire a legendary coach um, in coach Chris, uh, which I didn't see that coming at all. Um, and obviously the interim head coach, Jim Leonard has big shoes to fill. I mean, obviously you, you go from, you go from, from Barry, uh, you go to Gary Anderson um, or go, you go from Barry, you go to Brett, um, Gary Anderson, and then is Coach Chris, and now you fire Coach Chris, and Jim Leonard is is putting the the, the Budweiser hot seat, and um, I think everyone was extremely excited, and I think everyone should have, and because this 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 guy has done nothing but great things, um, as one as a football player at this university. Um, as a defensive coordinator working with the D and then D backs, and it's just like okay, well. All of that is going to transpire into the head coaching position. So we fire our legendary head coach. um, And now we have a legendary player slash coach that is now, again, put on the Budweiser hot seat. And everyone, I think everyone was expecting this team to go from here to there as soon as he became head coach. There are a lot of expectations. Again, he's a great coach. Um, 
and then you lose you still are having those those penalties and those mistakes 11 games into the season 12 games into the season for instance that 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 Minnesota game where you have that last drive uh uh-uh, uh that's that that's that's a no that's a no no so i think as far as the expectation of what this team was going to be as soon as the firing of coach chris was going to happen I, I think that people were extremely shocked I think that they thought this team was going to completely turn around um, and it didn't happen. Um, I think the first game that uh, at Northwestern that Jim coached, uh, I saw a side of the offense that I hadn't seen all year. I was super excited. And then the next game, that offense wasn't there. And I don't want to say it was just necessarily because it was against a football team that was Northwestern that only won football, won football game. But um, there was a lot of expectations going in. And now uh, you see the whole, and I'll let you, I don't know if you guys want to lead into it, the whole Jim Trestle stuff. Cause I told you I, I could go all day, baby. Now. <laughs> um, so it was just, I, I think that, and, and before we even start, I just want to clear the air is that, I mean, I'm a big fan of, 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 of Jim Leonard. And uh, again, he's done awesome things for this program. Um, as a player, he's done awesome things as a coach. And I think his biggest attribute is the fact that he was able to relate to these players on a level that a lot of other coaches couldn't do. And I think that's why a lot of people are kind of bitter about the decision uh, for Luke Fickle, uh, bringing in Luke Fickle. But at the same time, um, if we have Jim Leonard that didn't play at Wisconsin, we have Luke Fickle, um, and it comes down to the head coaching position, where are we going to side? Okay. We can't, we can't, we can't be bitter. We can't let our personal feelings play a toll on this whole decision because this, this decision now is not, it's not, it's not about me. It's not about you, Matt. It's not about you, Matt. It's, it's, it's about this, these players in this program, because there are a lot of, a lot of upset Badger fans. There needs to be change. And I don't want this, I don't want fans to be bitter about a decision that Chris McIntosh made in order to better this program. And now the floor is yours, guys. Well, okay. So what, first things first is it's the Coors Light hot seat, buddy. <laughs> a lot of Coors Light seat. Um, just a little, a, a little pushback is uh, at least. Listen, Jimmy took over. First off, we a lot of penalties on offense, and we're talking about that's not Jimmy's area. He yeah. was never asked to coach the offense. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Comes in. I agree with you. These things did not change, but they haven't changed last year or the year before. They were still making these stupid mistakes. And I think majority of it's on offense, which is really annoying to both of us because yeah, we know if you made a mistake on offense. You came out, you got like you, mm-hmm. a lot of things happened that you didn't want to happen. Even when, when people do, didn't even look like on, when you went to the stadium, it was like forever after in practice on Monday. And, and yeah. it was just annoying. So you never want to do it. I agree with you on that. To me, you're you're right. The expectation for Jimmy, to me, was just it was out of this world. People want to wanted to go to the national championship the second he got the the yeah. interim job. Same dudes, same issues, same mistakes. No special teams coach. We're making things. We're doing things we've never done before. I felt it's impossible for Jimmy to do whatever he could do. He did. He he was plugging as many holes yeah. Yeah. as he could with only ten fingers and ten toes. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he has all his fingers and toes. There was more holes in 20. Yeah. Now I, so, so, so I, so there's that for me, you know, I agree though, that, you know, this first off, it's a decision that I don't think many Badger fans or even players are able to make. I can't think of the Badger program without my emotions being in it. So I yeah. appreciate that you can kind of step back and be like, take the emotions out. Yeah. Is it Jimmy or is it Fickle? And I'm yeah. like, man, so I hear you. If Jimmy never played here and he never did what he did in the NFL and he never coached here, yeah, I get it. It's a little bit different, right? If he was a 10-year starter, let's say, in, I don't know, West Virginia, just popped into my head, went to the NFL for 10 years, coached six years here and was the interim, I would probably, which you're right, I would probably be like, Fickle's the dude. Like, he's our dude. But that's not kind of the, the reality. But I Listen, I'm a huge Jimmy Leonard fan. He's a good friend. I love him. I 
I'll say this. I don't think we gave him an opportunity to make any changes that Mac thinks and wants Fickle to do. And Fickle's already doing it. And, and I guess you're right. I don't know what Jimmy would have done. I'm hoping he would have potentially been like, we need to let a lot of people go and hire a lot yeah. of new people and yeah. change the culture. And it can't be the, we're going to go eight and four, nine and three, and then somehow get a Russell Wilson and go 11 and one or 12. And all. like, yeah, we, you're right. The program and the guys don't want to go eight and four every year. Yeah. We want to, we want to compete. Yeah. So I, so I hear that. So, so that's my, on my Coors Light hot seat. Um, <laughs> quickly. I actually want a Coors Light now. It's like mid-afternoon. Uh, <laughs> Some of us so, have jobs, Bernie. I, listen, I have a job too, but I, it doesn't mean I don't have contacts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, wait. So, Travis, so you, you went to the event. It was not on Monday. You met Coach Fickle. No, no, I didn't go. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah, I could have gone. I wasn't going to fly. Yeah, I, um, I was actually, that was... During that that um, meeting, I was actually um, doing an interview um, nice. okay. on the news. Yeah, just kind of uh, giving my two cents. Um, but it, it 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 was good to to see a turnout uh, from the guys uh, going and supporting him. Um, and but and, let's step back for one second because I have a lot of questions about that. But okay. so the news pops on Sunday. First off, the game in Minnesota was disgusting yeah. beyond belief. Yeah. yeah. The news pops on Sunday. I mean, starting early, like I was getting texts at seven in the morning, like Jimmy's in, they're going to name him. And then by noon, that was not happening anymore. Yeah. What was like, what happened for you that day? What went through your head? Then you hear the news and you start seeing things popping on Twitter. Like what, what was that like for you? So, so it almost started like it was, it almost started like it was like Saturday night after the game. So we got done with our radio show. We're, we're, we're closing up and basically it's coming down to, all right, we finished the regular season. We have 48 hours. We're going to, uh, we're going to announce our head coach. And we would nine out of 10 times say it was going to be Jim Leonard. Um, and I think we were, we were okay with that. I think we were just like, okay, like this is a safe decision. You know what I mean? And come Sunday morning, uh, one of the guys, uh, Spencer, sends me a, a, um, a screenshot of Luke Fickle. And I'm like, where does, where does, this, even, where does this even come from? Um, because, again, I, I, I thought that, that, that Jim was going to be the guy. Um, and I didn't even know that we were, we were looking elsewhere. And so as the day goes on, uh, all this Luke Fickle stuff comes up as far as, I mean, these programs that, um, uh, that he's turned down. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. And I'm like, there's no way that he's turning down programs like that. And then he's going to take the job here. So um, long story short, later in the day, they announced it. And I'm like, this is, I mean, I'm all for it. But I was like, where did this even come from? Um, and, and I think as far as uh, being a, a alumni and, and for all of us Badger fans, I think it was a shock because I think we were so equipped to have Jim be the guy um, and decisions were going to be made in the offseason to better this football program. And then the Lou Fickle stuff comes up. It was just it was a, it was it was completely out of left field to say it was completely out of left field. And I think that shock is what led to so many immediate reaction yeah, of yeah. hurt feelings and you know i mean we saw players say like either you know this is ridiculous and of course like they yeah. love coach leonard right they're gonna yeah. they're gonna love coach leonard. every team tends to love their interim coach right yeah. we've seen this a million times and even if it's you know it, it, this is what happened to clay helton at usc this is what happened to bill stewart at west virginia years ago this is what just happened uh in at georgia tech to one of their great alums who was the yeah. interim led the team to, well, m much more success than they had been having during the year. And he got hired as the dude. So, um, I mean, that was, and everyone kind of assumed it was going to be Jim. I think that's what made it so visceral for so many people because the assumption had been there. And that assumption may have been wrongful on the part of all of us 
the yeah. media. We might have clearly. been led that way. Though. We were definitely like we led, were led that, that way, way, but never. It's a very strong assumption. Yes. It's a very, right. right. Yes. It, and, maybe and, really and maybe it's super people strong. Kind of wish it could be true. <laughs> Just as so strong like 99. as like. 99.9% assumption strong see that so i think that's what is the hard yeah. part right like yeah you, you had to rip a band-aid off and then put one on right away yeah. because what is it to me it was a shock yeah i i mean to me it was a shock i want to ask you this question these deals don't get made in five minutes or two hours or four hours like a sunday morning that so when do when we, you when think, we talk 7.9 million dollars two two million dollars more than what he's getting they do Sure, but it's not. But listen, you got to uproot your family. Yeah. You got to talk to your family. You're talking to a lot of people. You're going to meet the kids. You know, like I've never been part of this. But Look, he had to watch, probably tell his team he's got. Watch, watch this as far as family. Yo, I'm making more than two million dollars. We hitting the road. Let's go. Yeah. That's how fast. That's how but, fast. You know. <laughs> well, so I think what's I think some of his desire was yeah. that he has a he's got five kids and he wants yeah. them to yeah, be in a place that he wants them to be happy and he thinks that they'll be happy. And Madison is yeah. that place. Yeah, I don't know if Notre Dame and South Bend is that place. Like, I don't yeah. know. I'm not, I can't talk smack about it. I just know it's a beautiful campus outside of it. Is, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Sorry, Jason Posey, because his wife is obsessed with it. Um, yeah. Is your dog's leaving? Dude, $2 million, <laughs> a lot of kibbles and bits, baby. Yeah. Um, but, I, but my question to you is, do you think Jimmy knew before the game? Uh, do I think Jimmy knew? No. Do I no? think that... Do I think that Jimmy knew before the game? No. Do I think that there are talks before this game? Yes. Do oh, I think sure. if Jimmy wins this football game, is this decision the same? No. So I think that I think. Do you think Jimmy knew that if he won against Minnesota, that it's I don't, I don't. I don't see. I don't think so. I. I, I don't. I'm think just so. speculating. I think, here. You know what? I'm I just think. Piecing I think it was all. Together. I think he was just. I think he was just as shocked as all of us. Um, and, and, and that comes down to, I mean, if you, if you look for something, no matter what it is, you're going to you find, find something. It. Sure. Do we know, has he came out and said that he wanted to for sure be the head coach? Now, Luke Fickle was in the same position where he mm -hmm. went as interim head coach but he didn't the next year, he didn't end up being the head coach. So some guys are, some guys know, I, I think us as men, I think you come to the point where we know what we're good at. Um, and I think Jim knows that he's great at being a defensive coordinator and, and being able to mm -hmm. connect with these guys. Um, we don't know if, if he actually wanted this, this, he wanted to continue to be the, the, the head coach. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of a, a main topic. I think that we're just throwing fire on on Chris McIntosh because we're like, okay, well, he planned on having to be the head coach the next year. We don't know that. We don't know that. But we also don't know if there had been talks prior to this game as far as the potential head coach. Jimmy, I do not think that Jimmy knew going into this game that he wasn't going to be the head coach. And I don't no, and I don't think that he thought that if he lost that football game, this decision was going to come down to the way that it did. No, but listen, you're right. I am speculating here. Yeah. I don't think a conversation in four hours, like we may be, yeah. or after a Saturday, I think I, I definitely, listen, Mac has a job to do. Yeah. And his job is a serious job. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely. a serious, and, and we are, and we as fans and as alumni and of ex-Badger players and now washed up drink beer drinkers like me. Listen, I want oh, the Okay, I'm not drinking a beer on, on the <laughs> podcast now. No, it's all it's right. It's an hey, energy drink. <laughs> and I'm going to drink one later too. You got to get through the day. Um, you know, I, 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 want, I want the guys to be successful. And you could see frustration on the field and you could see it. And people have allegiance, dude. I had allegiance to Coach White and to Barry Alvarez, right? Like, how yes. would that feel? I, I don't know. Like, how would it feel if like Barry's like, just got fired? I think it would be- yeah. And they had three coaches basically talk to them and stand up in their team meeting room this year. So yeah. that's a whole new, like, you got to come and do a lot of like mental healing. I think yeah. if you're doing like whatever coach Fickle's doing, it's got to be yeah. a lot of mental healing and be yeah. like, cause I've heard things about the O line that would never happen at when we were there. And I heard that they are all out of whack. 
because of because of the coaching and not I wouldn't say the coach. What coach, I, what, what coach Bo said is a good coach, though. I know. So I don't get where that's coming from. Well, so maybe he, he yeah. couldn't two relate things, to the dudes. Two things. A, to be fair, Coach Bo said we was a great offensive line coach in the early 2010s. He hasn't coached offensive line in a while. And I know things haven't changed that much. He's been coaching, but he's been coaching linebackers for a half decade. Things have changed in the way that offensive offenses have run. I'm not saying it's his fault or not his fault. We know he's got the right mindset to do it. But we also you know that's also their what second offensive line coach in as many years and a new system. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, that actually didn't look very different than the old one. <laughs> but you know, you, you go on with. But we've that. had so many off good offensive line coaches or good offensive uh, offensive linemen that the coach, uh, man, all you have to do is watch film from last year or the year before, the year before. You know what? Actually, just pull up Joe Thomas's game film. Put that. Let's watch that for five hours in a row, and that's what you do. Just, just do exactly what he does, and you'll be good. That's all. Do half of what he does, and you'll exactly, be good. exactly. Yeah. So, it's it, it it's a t- and again, I I think that uh, Jim was was put in in a position to where his back was against the wall, um, and now where we are, where. We are now. Yeah. I, Listen, let me get back for a second. Mac has an extremely tough decision, right? As yeah. as what I was saying before is he's got to make a decision that's unpopular. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. and to me at the at the beginning when he said Coach Fickle's our guy, to me I thought that was the most unpopular thing I've ever heard at Wisconsin. But as I reflect and think about it, and 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 talk to other guys, listen, everyone wanted Jim. I did too. He's our boy. He's our guy. He's our brother. I'm also really excited about Coach Fickle coming in. I do think, and the problem is, Travis, I have trouble getting our our emotions out of this, right? Like Kalaji played here. Al Johnson played. Um, There's a lot of other dudes around that, you know, um, Melhoff played. Am I missing anybody? Jimmy played, right? Like, yeah, uh, Mickey Turner. So you got a lot of dudes who like, I like as people and then as football players, who are probably having, first off, it's the business of football, right? You got to find a job if it's not there for you. The problem with me is the emotions. I like these guys and I want them to have a space here, but maybe that's wrong of me. And maybe I need a fickle to come in and be like, the whiteboard is clear and we're going to put dudes in that I trust, I know, and who are going to make this program elite. And I've been saying it, Matt, we have, we're not elite. I've never said we are because we can't get to the playoffs. We can't beat the Ohio States and sadly the Michigans who I hate to hate to death. Once we start beating them, we'll become elite. We have never been to the playoffs. So yeah. do I think that coach Fickle can get us there? And do I think Mac made an unpopular decision that has the benefits could be huge? Totally. So I'm on board. I'm excited about it. I am emotionally a little sad though. I, I, I and again, I think you, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I mean, and that's the thing is, is that us as Badger fans and us as former players, it's time to let the feelings go. Our feelings don't win. Our feelings don't take us to the playoffs. Our feelings don't give us the talk about winning national championships. That's what this is about. And this is, this is a guy, again, that, is, that has the potential to take this team to a completely different level. And it just sucks that when he starts winning football games, then our feelings would be like, okay, well, he was right. And then as soon as he starts winning football games, this, this, this conversation with Jim will never even be a point. And that's the thing is like, if you, if, if you don't feel some type of sorrow for Jim Leonard, not having this job as, as an, as a alum or as a Badger fan, you're, you're something's wrong with you. Yeah. You're not a true fan. To me, you're not a true fan. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But as a true fan, also you want to win and, and do that in a, in a in a way. You know, I don't think I think Fickle will be. What's the word? Like I think he's a Big Ten guy, right? Like he yes, he's coach, absolutely he a Big Ten guy. So he he understands the pedigree of Wisconsin, right? Mm-hmm. He understands the expectation, but I think yeah. he will understand when he's in Madison for longer and around the dudes, kind of like the culture. I don't want him to just jump into the culture and be like, let's be eight and four and be happy with it. I yeah. want him to jump into the culture and say, I'm going to take these three things I love about it. 
And then I'm not going to take these other things I don't like about it. And he's going to make his own culture. And yeah. and to me, that's exciting and makes me nervous at the same time, only for like, yeah. you know, like when I go back to the stadium, will I recognize anybody? It's kind of nice when you go back and know yeah. who everyone is. Yeah, so yeah. one um, thing that yeah. I will yeah. say here <laughs> is that um, I have been calling for a long time for more outside blood. And because it felt like things were getting stagnant with, a lot of, let's face it, I don't want to say lazy hires, but ones that felt like easy, like the first person they thought of kind of hires because they went to UW. Not that they're bad coaches, but that they just did the easy, took the easy route instead of doing a true search for someone who is an up and coming coach that's maybe out on the West Coast, that's maybe out in a different part of the country. And I guess I got what I'm calling for now. And now it's going yeah. to be the whole staff is going to be new. And that's going to be really, really interesting, especially with the news that came out today with all the assistants that are going to be coming over. It very much looks like it's going to be for the first time in a very long time, maybe zero Badger alumni on at least as on field staff and that it's going to have a unique feel to it. And so I am, you know, like I said, cautiously optimistic about this, though, because I feel like some sort of reinvigoration is has been needed for so long. And so I, it's like Bernie said, it's going to be fun to watch how, you know, the old culture of old Badger culture, if you will, integrates with, let's face it, what is a brand new day for not just Wisconsin football, but Wisconsin athletics. Because I think that Chris McIntosh, Travis, has really stepped out in front with this and saying, like, this is, I am the ultimate decision maker here. And this is my decision. And I, I, I'm for it's it. something that the department's needed for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 all for it. And obviously, obviously, Mac has played here. Um, and I've talked to Mac a ton. Um, I talked to Mac a ton um, after after losses um, and, and, and what he thinks. And I'm completely fine with the whole revamp of this program. I'm completely fine with it, because at the end of the day. I want a good football team. That's what it comes down to. And Sometimes we have to let our feelings go, let the past. Sometimes, Bernie, we're going to go into the stadium and we're going to have to say, come here, let me show you this picture of me on the wall. This is who I am. If it's I know still you there. I know me because you're new. <laughs> if it's still there. <laughs> now, all right, I'm going to call Matt right after this. this I'm going to tell him, hey, man, don't take down my pictures now. <laughs> Yo, well, you're down. in the Hall of Fame, dude. I'm not in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, like, but, but so, like, when I think about and reflect on some of those things, yeah. like, what the what the hallway looks like um badger alley and the history there and dude we're literally like this is selfish of me i know it is but we're literally starting a whole new yeah day a whole yeah. new a whole new culture a whole new coach really coming in at a right field we might have no alumni coaching yeah. which i'm okay with now I, like i yeah. think the band-aid it was raw and i'm okay with it although you know i'm still sad obviously for the guys that are all my friends but you know, selfishly, could they take stuff off the walls? Could they revamp the entire, first off, the McLean's going to be revamped anyway, because it yeah, has yeah. to be. Um, yeah. And they were talking about that too, which is something that, you know, let me go back a step. Macintosh is, uh, I, it's exciting. It makes me nervous if I was a coach, like as a fan, I don't care. Um, as a coach, I'd be very nervous. You know, like their expectations that were here, and now they are 10 yeah. notches And high. they should be. They should be. They should I totally be. agree. Our hockey team should not be where they are. Our basketball team, listen, they win, but they, they're, they're not elite, right? We, we, should, lost we should have beat Kansas. We should have beat Kansas. That was, it should have been. And then who calls the refs? Like, that's a, that was yeah. terrible how you missed that. Okay. So we're going in a lot of places, but there are a lot of coaches that are probably like, I'm on the hot seat and I better get up and go, which is fine. Um. I lost my train of thought now. As as far as 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 you were talking about, as far as um, like coaches, coaches. Oh, what I'm saying is like, don't listen. Everything in Badger Alley could be different tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Um, things could be taken down. It's just it's history that that now you know Barry was there for so long, and then guys who were there for so long. I mean, think about it. Like the only person who was an outlier was really Gary for two years, and he left, and then Coach Chris is there. So like that culture and history kept, kept staying pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Selfishly. I don't want, you know, like 
the things on the wall to come down because I'm I'm holding Lee Evans up. It's kind of nice. I like to see myself. Um, but 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 a lot of that stuff could change, and it could. You be, can take Lee down. Just leave me up. <laughs> just holding nothing up. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna cut me off and leave me just kind of dangling up there. That man no, got hops. Listen, I, he's got hops and he can float. Um, no, but I think I think what I think a lot of these things are are going to be good things in the long run. I think it's going to be it's going to be tough for the players right now. I think we have to get to January. Like we got to get out through the bowl game. I mean, are we even? Go- I haven't heard anything. Are we going to a bowl game? Well, I, I, nothing I, I, will be announced until Sunday when the college football playoff uh, selections are finalized. Then bowls will come out later on Sunday and into Monday. Yeah, but so I, I think, hope it's a I pinch think you did bowl. say, okay, okay, because I want to go to the game and it's right in my backyard. I'm um, hoping it gets the Music City Bowl because that would be right in my backyard. Selfish I, reasons. I'm going. I'm coming. I'm going to Nashville today. You're going to see me today, Matt. So mm-hmm. yeah. we can hang out today. Yeah. I do it. Can't go back out there. Well, that's going to be a December game. Um, it's going to be cold. Not in Nashville. Mm. Well, n- neither here nor there. I mean, Travis, do you, are we? Do you think we are going to play? Who coaches? I, I, I think. I think. I think we'll play. Um, it. It. I read something, and it almost seems as if. As far as uh, from now until the bowl game, there's going to be some slight tweaks. Um, it seems that uh, Luke Fickle does want to coach the game. Um, I think it's not. I think it's not fair to the younger guys because the thing is with with college sports is there could be one game that could solidify one of these younger guys' careers. There could be one game that you just go all out, and this is these are what scouts look at, and these mm-hmm. young guys don't realize that. Um, and I'll never forget that. Um, I forget. I think we played like Purdue and uh, I got really upset with, with, with Tyler Donovan because he didn't throw me the ball. And, and I like threw my hands down, went off to the sideline and I was just pissed. And I was in the elevator going upstairs <clears throat> after, like, I think it was the next week going upstairs uh, to the football offices to watch some film. And there was a guy in the elevator. Um, and I had no idea who he is. I can tell her, Hey, how are you? And he goes, he goes, why'd you, why'd you get so pissed uh, at Tyler Donovan when he didn't throw you the football? And I'm like, who's this guy? And I'm like, and I kind of like look at him and he's like, Oh, he goes, um, I'm the, I'm the head scout for the Rams. And I was like, and then at that point I was like, you need to always play as if everyone's always watching you because they look at stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times these guys played this season as if no one was watching. You see guys that you see guys that you see guys that, um, that, that go, that have, that have motors that never stop. Nick Herbig. Uh, I don't know what type of C4 he takes before games, but whatever it is, he needs to, to, to stop being selfish and give it to the whole team. I think it's something from Hawaii because Kamoi Leitu plays the exact same way. (laughs) Whatever they get on the Island is much different than the monsters we're drinking here. Exactly. That's for sure. (laughs) But yeah, it's just, it, there's just so much stuff. Um, there's just so many emotions and thoughts that go through my head. And it's just like, after watching this, this disappointment of a season, you, and that's what it is. It's disappointing. And you, there's so many things that you're like, okay, well, we need to change this. We need to change this. And you take your bits and pieces. And I just feel like Luke Fickle just brought all of those things and put them into one and bam, we're good now. So it is I, as far as the, the bowl game. I, I think that he is going to um, coach the bowl uh, bowl game because it's not fair. Again, it's not fair to these young guys. Um, but at the same time, I think it's another chance for these guys that are going to uh, go to the league next year to play another game with their boys um, and reminisce on the good times and how how much of an emotional roller coaster this season was. I mean, losing your head coach, losing your running backs coach. Uh, losing one of your former players, mm-hmm. losing Jim Leonard. Like it's, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very emotional season uh, for these win. guys. Yeah. yeah. And, and to play that last game with your teammates, I, I think it's huge. 
No, I would agree with you. I, I, I think it's a culmination and it's like, a you know, win or lose, it's a nice send off for yeah. the guys that put in so much over four, maybe five years, yeah. maybe six or seven years. I, you were during yeah. COVID, you could be there for 20 years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, so whatever that time is four to six years, yeah. you know, they really did. I think they deserve it. I agree with you. I'm just, I just feel like we need to, what you said about he's getting, bringing all that together. I think that happens January one or whatever the day after the bowl game is. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen before the bowl. I think yeah. it's going to be. So a work let's not get anyone yeah. too excited. I think, yeah. I think you'll see bits and pieces, but I think that's all you can see. It's yeah. listen, he's coming into an, he's coming into a, a similar unfair situation that Jimmy's into in three weeks. What can you change? Yeah. You, you can do a lot, but you can't really do a lot. You have to change the culture, but you're stuck in a season. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to bring in new weight training staff. When does that start? Is it now? Is it, you know, is it so like, to me, there's a lot of still up in the air. And if I'm a freshman, sophomore, junior one, I want these dudes to stay around because I think the transfer portal is a whole new deal. Yeah. But yeah. Speaking um, of that I, though, I actually want, I want yeah. to speak to that really quickly because I thought it was really interesting. There was a tweet from Reggie Pearson's father. I don't know if either of you guys saw this. You guys remember Reggie Pearson, the safety for Wisconsin, who ended up transferring to Texas Tech. He's had a lot of success at, at Texas Tech. He started, I think he was a all Big 12 honorable mention this year. Like excellent, excellent safety. But his father said, like, be, he said, like, attention, like Badger football players, before you make any decision about this, take your emotions out of it talk with your family, talk with the new coaches and get to know them before you do anything. And I thought that was really interesting from the perspective of a father who saw his son That's go amazing. through yeah. it. Yeah. And to me, that that resonated. And I hope that players see that because the impulse is going to be, oh, they, you know, they don't believe in my guy, Coach Leonard, then they don't believe in me and I got to go and I got to go somewhere yeah. else. And there is value in learning and growing. And we've seen some players publicly endorse that already. I will shout out TJ Bowlers. And like when this news came, he said like, basically like, it sucks. I love coach Leonard, but it, every change is an opportunity to grow. And I think that for a lot of the players on the current roster, changing the system and changing the culture could do a lot for their games as well. Now, some guys, you know, depending on how schematic changes may either have to change positions and transfer but we've seen that happen plenty of times before and it will continue to happen before we get go, before we continue we want to get a quick word from our sponsors here uh we are brought to you by betonline.ag and they remain your number one source in all the land nay all the entire globe for online sports wagering you name it they've got it nfl nba college football esports golf uh you know world cup soccer uh, they it's over there at betonline.ag so head on over to the website or use our promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v for a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit 50 percent you know it oh, okay. bet okay. online let me write that down A-G. promo on the code badges. believe b-l-e-a-v bet online where the game starts okay travis i want to i want to spin this forward for a second um because actually one of the questions that we got uh, from Ooh. you online uh, from Mike in Connecticut, uh, he wants to know if you've had a chance to take a look at how they use, how Cincinnati's use their tight ends. And if you think that the Badger tight ends could be more impactful in the offense moving forward, because this year was a pretty down year. That's a, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and <laughs> I, so I knew Coach Fickle, when he was a defensive coordinator and linebackers coach at, at Ohio State. And then obviously playing against guys like James Laurinaitis, who's probably arguably one of the best linebackers to, to play there. And then you got, you got guys like A.J. Hawk. And as far as – I think that Coach Chris did a great job at putting players in the right position to have success. Again, I came in as a linebacker. Um, and somehow figured out I wanted to play tight end. And Coach Chris essentially revolved that offense. He, it, it was almost like he he put me in like he put me in this like uh, like like um, I would say like a two. And he took all the things that I was good at and all the things I wasn't good at, and all of the good things that I was good at, he incorporated in that offense. All the things I was bad at. 
he incorporated with me with Joe Thomas and just put me next to Joe Thomas. So Joe Thomas helped me block. So that was the <laughs> things I was bad at. <laughs> so, so I did look at, I did look at some of their offense. Um, and tight end, the tight end position has revolutionized to be one of the most important uh, positions on this offense, on an, on every offense. And, and I'm going to interject really quickly here. Your style of tight end playing is one of the reasons that has happened. When because yeah. you, you and Lance Kendricks, I think, kind of revolutionized the way that tight ends were used in the early modern offenses, especially well, obviously within Wisconsin, because you guys were the first real true athletes playing tight yeah. end, not just athletic guys, but like true like athletes that can play anywhere on the field, but happen to be at tight end. Yeah, and and I think that um, I, I think that that the the. the the position just has changed. Like we forget, for instance, when when we played uh, the Patriots uh, in the Super Bowl, and 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 I was prepping, uh, which is a, he's an awesome awesome tight end uh, that made some really bad decision. But I would scout, I would play as as Aaron Hernandez, and Aaron Hernandez was 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 he would take handoffs, he would be running back, uh, he would be in the slot, and just just the way that coaches use their 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 mentality and their their impressive thought process in regards to where I can put this guy on the field to make a mis- Mitch match. And I think that Luke Fickle, um, I think he has that. I think that he's going to bring in a staff that is going to be able to put our tight ends in the position to have success. I mean, we've had guys that were extremely hurt. I mean, our tight ends room was extremely hurt. Um, I think, I mean, you look at Ferg, you look at Fumagalli, you look at, I mean, even Cundit that, that got hurt. I mean, these are consistent receivers. I mean, I'm not saying that they're going to be extreme, like deep threats, but that's when you have receivers be deep threats. But these are guys that are able to open up the middle, can get the crossing routes. Because, I mean, I, I would say the crossing route was one of my biggest, like, yards after catch. Just being able to get me the ball in open space, and then it's me versus the defender. And so I think that that Luke Fickle, um, as far as what he can bring to this offense, will be huge. And I, and so yes, I did watch uh, some of his offensive film. So I'm, 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 and I told Cundiff um, this week, and I said, hey, look, I said I know this is fresh, but give the guy a chance. I guarantee you, this is going to be, this is going to be better for your career. I guarantee you it. Yeah, when he's healthy, man, he is such a beast. Yeah, he, he's absolutely. he's such a beast, and he's had absolutely. two really unfortunate injuries in the past two yeah. years which has you know ha- ha- hasn't been fun uh you actually mentioned your transition to uh to tight end from linebacker and uh and someone else actually wanted to know about that if you were angry about that but it sounds like that was y- your choice more so than it was any other coach's choice yeah so so i always i grew up wanting to 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 play football I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to play in the NFL. I was seven years old telling my mom that I was going to play in the NFL. Didn't know what position. I loved offense. Uh, but as, at Pee Wee, I was offense and defense. Uh, high school, I was primarily defense, randomly played offense. Um, so I was, I was, it was my freshman year. And I don't know if, if getting hit by Bernie had a huge decision on that I didn't want to play linebacker anymore. But um, it was just to the point where it was like, look, I came to the University of Wisconsin. I didn't play much. That's not what I'm here for. I need to figure out a place to to make a mark. Um, Realize that we had three um, three uh, tight ends starting tight or three of our senior tight ends were leaving uh, the next year, and so I just kind of reached out to Coach B. I was like, "Hey, uh, what do you think about me playing tight end?" And he, I still remember, he laughed. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm being serious. Like I, I, if I'm, if, and I'm very set on my dreams. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And not playing my freshman year was not helping me get to the NFL. So I needed to come up with a position to where I needed to find something where I fit, where I can earn my keep, where I can earn my spot. And um, the linebackers that we had my freshman year were awesome. I mean, Dre, uh, Jonathan Casillas, Jay Reem, fact, those guys, they came in, um, and so um, it was it was my doing as far as reaching out to the coaches in regards to playing tight end. And uh, it was the best decision uh, of my life. I wasn't it wasn't out of frustration. I wasn't mad, but um, I just needed to <clears throat> put myself on the field to help this football team win in. And it wasn't um, being on the bench my freshman year. 
that's a good one. That's a great. That's a great. That's a beautiful answer, man. That that. that yeah, is. I was wondering what I was wondering what took you guys so long to to respond. I was like, no, that, that is thing? like that, that. That is so. <laughs> no, nobody thought, wants to no, talk no, after it's that. Very thought, no, it's very thoughtful, right? Because of the way that you said, like, no, this isn't. Yeah. You are like taking control of your own destiny in doing yeah. that, right? Yeah. You're not. You're not letting the world come to you and reacting to that. You are actually being proactive about that, and I think that is something that is a good reminder for all of the student athletes undergoing this transition right now be proactive yeah. about what you want don't let it happen to you go and talk to the coaches right go yeah. and talk like what would your advice be for anyone on the team right now before they made a decision about their future well i think the biggest thing is to to, to give this guy a chance um take out your emotions right now and look at look at uh Look at uh, Luke Fickle's track record. His tra look at look at what he's done, um, and I mean he's been a successful coach. A coach that, uh, I mean, we haven't had, uh, arguably ever. You know what I mean? So I mean, you, I mean, you could argue about uh, who's the best coach we had. I mean, you have they're all about the same winning percentages: Barry, uh, Bielema, and Chris. Uh, but this is a guy that is going to be able to bring something different to our offense, bring something different to our defense, bring something to our team in general. And I'm going to say, just, just guy, just be patient. Don't, don't let your feelings, don't let your feelings play that much of an impact on, on your decision, because you can sit here and say, man, now Jim's gone. I'm playing for Jim. So I'm going to go elsewhere. One, you don't know where Jim is going Two, That doesn't mean just because Jim is going somewhere, that doesn't mean that you're going to be a starter because you best believe that there that that program that you go to there's going to be someone else that thinks that they have that start position and you're going to have to fight for it you're going to have to fight for it and i think a lot of times based off the play this season a lot of guys were just comfortable where they're at and they're like okay well we i don't have any pressure behind me so i can just do kind of whatever i want but don't don't let your feelings don't let your feelings play too much of a toll on your decision uh let let, let things ride out i mean this isn't this isn't this is this is coming down to to whether you play in the NFL or, or not. I mean, some guys, I just feel like some guys um, don't realize the opportunity that they have in front of them. I played in college football because I had dreams and aspirations to go to NFL. I, Bernie, did, did, is, is that, is that a, is that a, is that a, a, a valid statement saying that Definitely. I hope that most guys are playing college football because they want to play at the next level? Yeah. Is that okay? Why so, else would you sacrifice yeah. your body and I mean, your no one time? says like I just want to go to college and not make money and just be the yeah. there, best guy. There on are college you know, there are I, yeah. I've heard of yeah. rare play, you know, rare people who have done that. Yeah. My, Myron Roll, uh very most notably, who went to col who who got the scholarship and then became a what a Rhodes scholar and a neurosurgeon. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. but you know, that is very, very rare. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. No, but, but also, to but like, talking about the yeah. NFL though, there were nine guys drafted from Cincinnati last year. That's more than Alabama. Exactly, and th and this is the thing: is that guys, be patient. This is a coach that knows the system, uh, that does have a connection in the NFL, that produces a, a ton of great uh, athletes. So just be patient. Just be patient. Don't 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 make uh, a temporary decision. Uh, that is going to be a negative outcome on a long last on your on your potentially your career. So just just be patient, fellas. Yeah, I, I I would say pretty much the same. I would say three things. I'd be like, guys, listen, this is the rawest thing that's ever going to happen to you in, in your 19, 20, 21. Yeah. Don't make an emotional decision. Take a few days Two, do not read Twitter. Do not go on Twitter. Yeah. Don't do on social media. Don't read it. Yeah. Don't post anything. Yeah. If the, the if you post something to say, listen, I'm taking my time to think about my decision, yeah. and then just leave it and don't read it. It's impossible for young kids. I can't even do it, but I I don't know how they do it. But yeah. I would try to figure out a way to not do it. My third thing would be go and talk to the coach. Yeah. Just get a feel. Say, hey, coach, can I take an hour of your time or half an hour of your time? That says a lot. Sit in the room with him and be like, hey, coach, I just want to ask you some questions. Like, yeah. I don't know you. You don't know me. I want to get to know you. You know, this is pivotal for, for my decision yeah. um, is getting to know you like, and then behind closed doors, you can ask questions and he can tell you real, Hey, what do you, what do you think you're going to do with the offense? Like, yeah. Are you hiring someone? Are you firing my coach who I love? Are you, 
and you can have these open decisions. And I would say, take that time and think about that. I, I, and listen, I think people will leave because yeah. I think it's going to be a raw decision that they might love coach, you know, Jimmy, and that's their decision. I'm okay with that. You know, I, I'd rather you not leave. I think Wisconsin, once again, we start at the beginning is, is a brotherhood that this is your life forever. Yeah. And transferring around or going somewhere, you know, like Jalen Berger now is at Michigan state. I don't know if he cares about Michigan state. Like how do you, could he love it after a year? He could. Um, but like, do you feel like it's home? And you and I feel like Madison is like yeah. home. Yeah. I, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely home. And, and just based off of what you said, I mean, my sophomore, my sophomore year uh, was coach um, Bostead's first year. And then the next year I get a new coach and Rudolph, Joe Rudolph comes in and I'm like, I'm not bitter about that. I did. I took, to, Hey coach, whenever you get in time, let's meet, let's get together. Let's, let's, let's get to know each other. Um, because there are going to be guys that uh, make this decision and aren't going to have the same opportunity at the next university and it and and shame on them yeah listen every university has dudes and they got yeah. starters and they yeah. got you know the pipeline they got backups yeah. and i feel like unless you know unless you like really lose everyone in one position and you literally go in there it's a hard it's going to be a hard awakening yeah um for a Perhaps lot of guys it's not always and, greener i mean it's, it's not always yes. greener. and also like you know wisconsin you know madison you know the, the area, you know, the place. And if you give this dude time and you be coached in a bowl game and you're open, I think people have to be open. And, ex- you know, like they always said to us, buy in, you got to buy into the yeah, program. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. You got to buy in. These dudes have to buy in. And now it might take longer since the season was outrageously bananas, but good. It can take yeah. a little longer. Cause I think once you focus all those emotions, those raw feelings, we're going to be killers on the field. Yeah. And I, I, and- I don't think, and I complete, and, and that's how I, that's how I was raised. That's how you were raised. As far as the buy-in, there's too many outside factors nowadays to for for you don't even know why uh, essentially these players are attending these universities. And like I, I obviously the, the the biggest the biggest reason why I went to the university is because I'm from Wisconsin. I wanted my mom to be able to watch all my games. I love the fan base. Um, always have support. There's nothing better than me going out to a restaurant. Um, and someone thanking me for what I did 12 years ago, like that. I'm like, man, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you remember that. That is, that is amazing. This fan base is, is unbelievable. And there's going to be guys that go elsewhere, uh, and they're not going to get that same love. And uh, obviously uh, this, this game doesn't last forever. Um, so this is going to be a huge turning point for a lot of these guys. Um, but this is also a very big opportunity for um, players and a football program to completely do um, a complete turnaround. So I'm excited. Dude, Travis, how do you get in front of these dudes? Like, I feel like you are just a great, I don't know if it's a motivational speaker, great, like, I feel like you and I have made a lot of mistakes in life and it's nice to like now, you know, Maybe not you, but I definitely have. <laughs> take, you know, take a step back and be like, guys, let me share. Like, let me share what I actually. Yeah. Like, let me take a breath and after this has happened, and like, hey, I'm listen. I'm nobody, so I'm okay with that. Like, don't worry about sitting the uh, the upper deck during yeah, games. Full, um, if Mac lets me, in, if Mac yeah. lets me, yeah, uh, only get the, the yeah, greatest fullback in the history. Yeah. Of the program. yeah. You know, yeah, no, no yeah. big deal. Uh, no, yeah. no, yeah. it's um, okay. Okay, Cecil second to, t- second to Heisman winner Alan Amici. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, he was a running back, but okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> he, I mean, he, they did it with a wing tee. Like it kind of counts. It doesn't count. Single wing, baby. Uh, Cecil Martin is my, is uh, I think my, okay. yeah. is, is the best. Okay. Fullback okay. Ever. okay. Yeah. We, we can... He'll tell you I am, but don't believe him. Yeah. Listen, uh, at the end of the day, I think you you hit the nail on the head, like stick yeah. with it. You came here for a reason and it's not just the coaches. You yeah. know, and that's, it can't be that. Like I didn't come to Wisconsin for Barry Alvarez, yeah. right? My, I came because one, it was the big 10. It was Madison. It's a good university. They got, you know, you can, the alumni base is phenomenal. Those are good reasons to stay someplace. So I hope this, I hope the guys are able to like kind of take a step back, take a breath and just reevaluate what's important to them and why they made this yeah. choice. 
And and I guarantee, you know, one through five is not a coach. Yeah. And I hate to say that, but like. But Valley also, I- it shouldn't be because of the way that college football is in today's day and age. You know, if, if you know anything about college football, you know how much coaches move around. And you yeah. know you can't, like, if you, if, if you have a good high school coach who knows how to help you in the recruiting process, and uh, they can also help you understand that when you pick a university, you're not, you can't just be picking that head coach because they could be up and gone in two months after sign after sign. Yeah. yeah. And then also, you, you know, like, listen, Barry, when I signed, he almost, he was thinking about Miami and my dad's like, Oh, what, what do you, what, what's going to happen? Like, I'm like, I, I don't have any, I don't have any options. I go to Wisconsin. Yeah. So I don't yeah. even like, yeah. in my head it, to me, it, there was nothing else. It was Wisconsin. Yeah. I signed and I'm going. And you were allowed yeah. to still decommit, I think, when a coach left. After I don't even, I don't even know. Ago. I don't even know if I don't even know if we could. But 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 bringing that up, I mean, this this is what Barry Barry uh, retired after my freshman year, and it wasn't like I was like, okay, I'm going to go elsewhere. I was like, man, we just lost a legendary head coach. You know what I mean? Like, program, we're we're still moving forward. I mean, and nothing's going to change. And Coach I mean, B had gonna... only been there for one year, right, before he yeah. became the head coach. Yeah. So he was still re- yeah. a relatively new voice in the building. Well, well, he was he was a linebacker. I don't know. How long was he there? Because I no, guess he's only the four. defensive coordinator. Oh, four for, or five. He was yeah, there two, two years. Then. Yeah, two years before. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Two years. So, but I, I wasn't going to. not a lot of time. I know. I wasn't going to not. I wasn't going to not. I, I wasn't going to go elsewhere because, I mean, it's it's the same stuff, same schedule. We just we have a new a new head coach, um, and luckily I, I was able to uh, build a or build a tremendous bond with Stocko. Um, obviously, tr- build a tremendous bond uh, with uh, Tyler Donovan. Uh, and Tyler Donovan just got on him and I got on the same page where he just knew he could just throw the ball up and I'd go get it. So and, I can talk about that because I okay. was cutting highlights for the little promo <laughs> thing I did. And yeah. most of them are, are, are TD thrown to you. And I kind of forgot just how freakish of an athlete he was as a quarterback. Like there are, I mean, we, we've had plenty of good quarterbacks. His athleticism though was unique. And yeah. he was slipping out of sacks to get you the ball when he would just throw it up. I know. Right? And that's, that were and that's insane. So do you have like a favorite Tyler Donovan, like, I can't believe he did that memory. Well, one of them was, oh man, it was, well, my number one was against Ohio State um, with my catch in the back of the end zone. That, by the way, if you guys didn't know, is in the movie Draft Day. Okay. Nice. Uh, and two, as was touchdown Tyler Donovan. Two, yeah. yeah. So, so there was, there was just so many things that, uh, that that Tyler was able to do based off of his athleticism. I, I forget which team it was. It might have been Michigan, uh, but there was one. He was on it's step back, spun to the right, spun back to the left. Half the time, I don't even think that he knew where he was going. He was just spinning, <laughs> and he just he just spin he just spun spun spun, and then just kind of like ran to the side and threw it up. And I had to like jump over one of the defenders' backs to get the ball. Um, it was like, I don't know, maybe like a 20, 25 yard catch, but how uh, like for the amount of spins that he did was probably like a, like a 70 yard catch. Like it's just, it's just, he was just (laughs) able to, he was just able to, um, avoid, um, tackles and be able to make so many things happen with his, his legs, um, that a lot of quarterbacks couldn't do because, you know, Stocko, Stocko wasn't, Stocko wasn't moving. Uh, I remember Stocko's catch uh, or Stocko's run. Are you frozen? No, he's not. not frozen? He's good. No, you're you're all good. Am I, am no, I you're good? good? You're good. Bernie, yeah. now you're it, frozen. Yeah, it's Bernie's problem, not okay. not not yours. Yeah. So so no, I you're... remember Stocko's catch or Stocko's run against Michigan. Looks like you're back now against Michigan. And it was like five yards, and I felt like that was. I'm like, man, I was like, he just did that. I didn't even know Stocko could run. Yeah, but also so, took him like 15 seconds to go five yards. Or so it felt like in the stadium, I can I will vouch for that. It felt like it took like it felt like he was like lumbering. Everything was in slow motion. Oh man. 
So no, uh, that, that, that was, no, that was uh, no. I, I was just because I'd forgotten just how athletic. Tyler yeah. Donovan was. Is there another player while you were there who had like a feat of athleticism on the field that just blew your mind? That like you did not think that I could that was physically possible on the field, either there or in the NFL. Uh, Jack Icaguano was extremely athletic. Um, um, I, I think like Shane Carter uh, was extremely athletic, was a very, very, very good basketball player. He's a safety for us, number 25. Very good basketball player. Uh, Jonathan Casillas was extremely athletic. Uh, and and DeAndre, DeAndre Levy was extremely athletic. These are, these are overall guys that could have been, like, recruited as athletes. You know, some guys don't necessarily have a position. They just get recruited as an athlete. Those are guys that, that could have been um, – recruited as athletes. Um, uh, there's guys like um, Jared Cook that played um, at Green Bay and well, I think he was at Tennessee, but I remember I was at the combine with him and just like seeing guys, just seeing guys leap and jump and be able to do things so fluid was like, this is, this is, this is unbelievable. And I'll never, I will, yes, I, I worked extremely hard um, to get where I uh, went, um, but ninety percent of it was God-given talent. I was extremely blessed. I, I I was just able to do things that people had to work a very they had to work extra hours and able to and I, and it's it's just God-given talent. But these guys at the combine, it was like it was like the same for them. And I hadn't seen so many. I haven't seen a group of guys that big just be able to do some of the things that they could do. Is is unbelievable. Totally. Matt, do we have any more questions from the fans? Those were uh, I those were the three. That, those those are the big three that I had. Those were the big three that I had. Three? I only heard two. Yeah, no, that was, no, the, the third one. We didn't one give was, them a lot of time to, like, ask. We didn't give people a lot of time to ask questions. No, we, no, we didn't. We gave them less than 24. We, we, we gave them less than 24 hours. Yeah. It's okay. So, no, I want to I wanna wrap it up here, though. Just give... <sighs> Your 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 you final thought. What's go ahead? Uh, yes, go I, ahead, Vern. Go I, ahead, Vern. I, I need to assure hear. all the alumni, all the ex Badgers, and all the fans that we are in a good place. Because I think a lot of people are still like, "Eh, I don't like it." So, yeah. let me hear your thoughts and 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 make make us all just feel a lot better. So, so we are in we are in a time of, I, and I don't know if if people have still been uh, eating leftover turkey because the stuff that's in turkey makes people sad. But as far as the Jim Leonard thing, we're all sad. And again, it starts with, if you're, if you, if you're an alumni, if you are um, an, an absolute Badger fan, you should feel some type of way about this decision to bring in Luke Fickle. At the same time, you should also feel some type of way about this program and where it's at and where it's headed because it's not good. And everyone has jobs to do. Chris McIntosh uh, is a mastermind. Give, give, this, give this time. He brought in a coach that has been proven, a coach that recruited me as a linebacker and connects very well with these kids. Very good recruiter. And that was one of the biggest things that Wisconsin was lacking uh, as far as th them bringing in good recruits. This guy is going to put an X on that box. I think that... He, he fills the void of teams being upset and continuously saying that, Min uh, that Michigan um, and Ohio State is going to have the premier athletes. You know what? Bringing this guy in is going to alleviate that. We are now going to get some of these guys. We're gonna, it, it, we don't think it's possible. We are going to get some of these four-star, five-star athletes that are going to come to this university and turn this program around again. It is okay to be upset about the Jim Leonard um, situation, but it is now time for us to put that in the past and realize that we have an awesome coach that wants to do awesome things at this program. Again, we don't know if Jim doesn't, that, that if he wanted that role. If we do, we know if he's going to go back to D coordinator. We don't know, but I'm telling you now, if we have both of those guys, <laughs> it's game over for these teams. Ain't gonna be no row in the boat. Uh, we get, to, and, and and this is the thing is like we want. We, I think we're so 
so okay with just treading water and, and staying at the same pace. This is that, this is that hump. This, this guy will get us over that hump that, that we've been in front for a very long time. I'm very excited about this, this, uh, the future of this program. And so should you guys. Hell yeah. Let's go. I, I love just want to see Bucky do like 90 push-ups in a game and like literally <laughs> pass out. Let's go, baby. I'm excited. I am, you know what? Let's go. It's going to be, it's fun. Like there is some serious juice in the program right now. Yeah. And it's, you, you just got to buy in. You got to believe. You got to buy it. Yeah. Like, you got to buy and, in and believe. You know, and I think it, it helps when we get guys like you, you guys, the alumni who have a voice to really buy in and say, I think the way that you put it, Travis, is really poignant. Like, if you don't hurt for Jimmy, you're not a Badger fan. But yeah. also, if you're not going to support this, you're not a Badger fan either. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. both things can be true. You can hurt for Jim, yeah. but you can also be very excited about this hire and realize that Luke Fickle is one of the elite coaches in college football, and he is now at the head of the Wisconsin program. Yeah, it's just, it's just sometimes, if it were easy, everybody could do it. I mean, I just remember playing against the Packers and my coach would be like, okay, well, we would, uh, now it's time for Travis. You got to go block AJ Hawk. Every time I blocked him, I got a stinger, but I knew I had to do it. But I also wanted our team to win while getting a stinger. So it's <laughs> kind of one of those things, like it kind of relate, like it hurts, but you got to do it. Yeah. See how it is. No, that's and, a good. That's actually a perfect it. metaphor. It's a yeah. perfect you metaphor. You gotta do it. Yeah. You yeah, gotta exactly. do it. Nobody wants exactly. to do inside drill. But yeah. You want to win. You gotta exactly. do it. Exactly. No one wants to do goal line at camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And then if you don't score, you're like, well, start it back up on the five. <laughs> Nobody really wants to do that. <laughs> they used to put me in on goal line. I'm like, what? Are, what? What do you want me to do? <laughs> like, unless we're past. Why do you want me down here? <laughs> I'm 225 pounds. <laughs> Put in, put in another tackle. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. let's go. I'm excited uh, no. to also just see an offense that is not run, run, incomplete pass. Yeah. And three and out all the time. I'm excited for new ideas and just to see, to see something I haven't seen on offense in a decade. Yeah. Right. I, it, I'm it, very that, excited. I'm yeah. so excited. I'm looking forward to Saturdays. And, and that's a feeling that I hadn't had in a very long time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the bowl game uh, and I'm looking forward yeah. to hear what happens. Like I see uh, Miles Burkett's dad's already sent a tweet today saying my, you know, this is my quarterback and he's staying. It looks like miles in his Jersey yeah. staying, yeah. Yeah. you know, you get a lot of, you get a lot of news. So mm -hmm. digest it. Believe me, it's still social media, but digest it the way you would digest it. Um, but it's going to be an exciting four to five, six weeks. Yeah. I think up until signing day, it's going to be real exciting. I just want, you know, as a player, I just want these guys to to just enjoy whatever they can enjoy. I mean, this is a crazy situation that if you're a senior, like, I don't want you to harp on this. I want you to have a good time. Remember, yeah. like, dude, you got to go into the workforce soon. Yeah. And if it's not yeah. the NFL, that's a job forever. And this is the only time you have. If you have a month left before you got to go sit in an office somewhere, dude, take advantage. Go to the college club and Wando's every day. Don't miss a <laughs> night. Don't miss a brunch. Don't miss a night. Don't miss anything. So I'm soak it say. up, baby. Soak, soak it, it up. Just, and then try just to enjoy it. Rent an apartment right above the KK. I just, I don't want, I don't want these guys to, I just think as of right now with this decision, there's people probably that are still going to be bitter come bowl game. These guys are going to expect this whole program to turn around by the bowl game. It's not fair. And again, it wasn't fair. For Jimmy, for Jimmy, right? Yeah. So, so you had yeah. Jimmy had seven weeks. You think he could turn? I, I, I. Yeah. We talked about this, Matt Perkins, every day. He can't do it. There's you don't you didn't even give him an opportunity yeah. to hire or fire one yeah. person. Yeah. So the same is so guys. If if there's five people listening or five hundred, five million would be nice. Don't take what you see on whatever bowl game we play in December, and be like, this is what the program's going to look like forever. It's a hundred percent not true. Yeah. Yeah. He's got three weeks to prepare for a bowl game. One, he's moving. Like, imagine just everyone's moved. It yeah. takes weeks to move. Yeah. And this dude's like the head of a football program that has seen two other coaches in the same week. And now he's moving to Madison with five kids and a wife. Early even... signing day is in less than three weeks. So, like, he, this guy's yeah. got a hustle, and he's yeah. got a lot on his plate, and he knows that, I'm sure. And he's doing it. He already – the D coordinator from Cincinnati is coming. 
It looks like the offensive guy, if he doesn't get oh, the job. Oh, the D, D coordinator is coming? Trestle, uh, yeah. Hey, that's what Twitter just said. Tre- yeah, no, Trestle's officially coming. So, I mean, like, listen, th- these things are, you know, positives, right? They're, 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 I'm still hurt. I wanted Jim to be the D coordinator, but yeah. if it's not him and I take some emotion out because he's, it's not him, I have to be excited. Yeah. I have to be excited um, yeah, for Trestle to come. If they're going to bring, if they're bringing the D coordinator from Cincinnati over, my new dream is to have Jimmy as the associate head coach slash special teams coach. Yes, our, our special teams is bad. I don't know how you don't have a coach. They're so bad. They're so, so bad. We can't get started. This is another hour and a half show. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have been standing on my pillbox all year saying, what the hell are they doing? Oh, and that, that to me is another reason But why it's emblematic of coach the larger, Chris of the larger issues of the program getting sloppy. Totally. That is a that's an asset. That's an asset to you winning football games. Is your and special we lost, teams? We lost the Washington State game off a missed a missed field goal, and at Ohio State we weren't going to win that game. But at Ohio State we should have repunted, and no one knows the rules to the you know like yeah. even I don't know the rules back to the drop snap in the Rose Bowl in twenty nineteen by Lottie yeah, but, the, uh, on the punt. Right. Like, this has been right. happening for half a decade at least. So I think there's listen we. Here, and here's what's good. I think fresh eyeballs are good. Yeah. You know, I think someone coming in and being like, listen, I don't have a huge allegiance to this place right this second. So I can say to myself, I need a special teams coach. It has this place. This has to get better. Okay. Hey, Trestle, you're my guy. I know. And I trust and you're successful. You're coming over. This yeah. offense coordinator probably wants to come over. I think he's going to apply for the head job at Cincy, but if he doesn't get it, I think he's on the, you know, the next train or whatever they take from Cincinnati. What are they? I think it's they a take a boat. They take yeah. a land boat uh, yeah. over. Actually, Ted <laughs> Kellner flies his, his thing back and forth from Cincinnati, just picking dudes up. And, the um, Santa Maria. They, they, yeah. they, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, listen, it's exciting times. Just, yes, for your, if you're a fan and you're like, be like patient. We, be just patient gotta, we just got to get to January. And yeah, be patient. I would, I patient. think that's a good I'm one. hoping for a proper spring game. I'm hoping for a oh, true, yeah. proper oh, yeah. like, spring like game. Ohio Wisconsin, State. Is it Ohio State? Wisconsin, has, like, Ohio like, Wisconsin, State like Wisconsin doesn't even, hasn't even had like either public swimming field or they're like modified practices. Do it gets people juiced up? A game, even an inter squad scrimmage, a proper like. Yeah. Though a Ohio State gets like eighty thousand people to come to that because it's live action football and it gets people excited about it. And I think that that's been lacking even you know from you know the Chris administration just. Things like Travis, that. we did that 20 years ago, didn't yes, we? Yes, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did I it. Remember, it a I remember hating yeah. every yes. second of it. Yeah, yeah. I hated yeah. every second of it. Yep. And in the you stands, we freaking loved it. Yeah. I know, I know. I get what the fans, listen, I'm happy. And, and, and I could see us beat up on each other. They loved it. We and know, up they, close. Want, they, they, they want to see like the redshirt freshman who just happens to ball out the day. Like, that dude's the future. You know, yeah, things like that. Yeah, they want to be able yeah. to, they want to see, oh, Travis Beckham just moved to tight end. Look at him move in space. We've never had a tight end that can do that before. Look at, oh, look yeah. at him in those pants. Ooh. <laughs> oh, look. Huh. Bernie spent look. the entire offseason at Wando's. You can tell. <laughs> 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 What's this dude doing? Drinking a beer on the, on the sidelines? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. That's awesome. It's awesome. All right, well, Travis, I, I, th- I think the future is awesome. Travis, thank yeah. you so much for yes, spending absolutely. time with us. Yeah, we love it. you. Uh, love you know, appreciate thank it, you fellas. so much. And uh, everybody, until next time, on Wisconsin. Until next time. On, on Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Let's go, baby. Let's, Let's go. go, fellas.